My first book on Hadith, Teaching Children the Way of Prophet Muhammad, Etiquette, and Good Manners, by the Sincere Seeker Kids Collection, narrated by Brad Grahowski. Because of his mercy and love for us, our God, Allah, sent many messengers and prophets to teach us about himself and the purpose of our lives. We who follow the teachings of Allah in the religion of Islam are called Muslims. Muslims are taught that no one should be worshipped except our God Allah, the creator of heavens and earth, the creator of you and me. The last and final prophet that Allah sent to us was Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was born in Mecca. When he was forty years old, he went to the cave Hira by himself to meditate and think deeply about life and this universe in the month of Ramadan the ninth month of the Islamic calendar. While he was meditating in the cave, an angel named Gabriel came into the cave. This scared Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. But the angel hugged him tightly and commanded him to read the Holy Quran, which had come down from Allah, three times. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, I do not know how to read. So the angel Gabriel read the first verse of the Holy Quran to him. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was still very scared and ran home to his wife and asked her to cover him. He told his wife Khadijah what had happened. She quickly comforted him and told him, Our God Allah will never humiliate you because you are good to your family and you help the poor and the needy. After that, Allah sent down the Holy Quran piece by piece to Prophet Muhammad through the angel Gabriel for the next 23 years. The Holy Quran that our God Allah sent down to us is the main book of Islam, written in the exact words of Allah. He sent it down to guide us to Him, build a relationship with Him, and teach us to love Him. The Holy Quran teaches us everything we need to learn to live a good, healthy life. The Holy Quran teaches us what is good for us in life. It also teaches us what is wrong and harmful in life and what we should not do. After Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, received the Holy Quran from Allah, he spent the rest of his life explaining and living the Holy Quran and Islam teachings to his friends that were with him called the Companions. When Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, taught his friends, they would write down his statements, actions, and beliefs. These things that his friends wrote down were collected into what is called Hadith, which means speech report, or news. The Hadith is the sayings that Prophet Muhammad said, did, or approved. The Hadith helps us understand and answer questions about the details of our religion of Islam, and it explains the Holy Quran to us in more detail. Unlike the Holy Quran, the Hadith is not the words of Allah, but it is the words and actions of Allah's latest and final prophet, Muhammad, peace be upon him whom Allah sent to us to teach us everything we need to know to live a good life. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was sent to guide and lead us to our God Allah, our Creator. Therefore, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, understood the Holy Quran, loved the Holy Quran, and lived his life based on the teachings of the Holy Quran. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the role model that Allah sent to everyone in this world to show us how to live like him, and copy him, and follow him. Allah sent him as an example of how we should live our lives. Allah commanded us to follow his Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So following Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is following and being obedient to Allah, our Creator. The actions and practices of Prophet Muhammad are called sunnah, which means the way or the practice of. If we do those things named in the sunnah, we copy whatever the Prophet said, did, or approved. The Sunnah helps us Muslims to try to copy and follow Prophet Muhammad's faith, behavior, attitude, patience, compassion, and righteousness. We Muslims also try to copy everything the Prophet did, including how and what he ate and drank, the position he slept in, the way he behaved and interacted with others, and so on. Allah has sent us guidance through hadith to live the best way possible in our lives. 
Allah and Prophet Muhammad love us so much and want what's best for us. Everything that Allah and Prophet Muhammad has told us to do or stay away from is only in our benefit, so we should listen to them for our own good. Sincerity An excellent place to start learning hadith is to learn about sincerity. This hadith about sincerity teaches us that what we do in our lives is judged and rewarded based on our intention for doing that thing. Doing things with good intentions is called sincerity. Good intentions and sincerity are formed in the heart. If we did a good deed to please our God Allah and did it for a good reason, we will be rewarded by Allah. A Muslim can have multiple good intentions when doing a good deed. For example, a Muslim can do a good deed to please Allah and make himself humble. And he or she would get rewarded with extra good deeds. We should constantly listen to what our hearts tell us to make sure we are doing good deeds to please Allah. We should also do good deeds in private where only Allah can see us, even if others can't see us. Showing off. The opposite of sincerity is showing off. If someone does something with a bad intention to show off in front of others and impress them, they will not get rewarded. Whenever we do a good deed, we should be sincere about it and do it only for the sake of Allah, not to show off to others or to seek praise or money. So the next time you do a good deed, stop and think about why you are doing that good deed. Are you sincere about doing it? Or are you doing it to impress someone else and maybe show off? We are encouraged to be humble and not show off. Allah loves those who are humble. We should constantly please Allah and not show off. Good Manners and Good Character Every Muslim must have good manners and good character. This is very important in our religion of Islam. Our Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, had the best manners and good character. He always treated people around him with the highest respect and only said good things about them. To have good manners, Muslims must be friendly and kind to people. Muslims must be especially kind to their parents. Muslims must say good words, speak the truth, not lie, keep their promises, not hurt anyone, and not insult anyone. They must treat people fairly. Think only good thoughts about others. Not accuse people of doing wrong or bad things. Not take anything that is not theirs. Not make fun of others. And not get into arguments and fights. Muslims must not be rude or harsh. They should lower their voice and speak softly. Not get angry and not gossip. They should forgive others so that Allah can forgive them. They must be patient, gentle humble and cheerful, and they should smile. A person can have no better blessings than having good manners. It's a better blessing than having a lot of money and a big house. Having good manners is a sign of having faith. On the day of judgment, there will be nothing heavier on the scale of good deeds than one's good manners. Allah is beautiful and loves beauty. Allah loves people with good manners. He does not love people who have bad manners. In addition to having faith and saying, there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah, the easiest way to get to heaven is by having good manners. The best way to see if you have good manners is to see how you treat your family. Our Prophet said the best of you is those who are best to their family. Being good to your parents before our God, Allah, commanded us to pray, fast, pay zakat, and do hajj, He commanded us to worship Him alone and not anyone else, and be good to our parents. He said we should be good to our parents immediately after commanding us not to worship anyone else except Him, which shows us how important Allah thought it was to be good to our parents. Our parents love us very much, and sacrifice so much for us, and we can never pay them back for what they have done for us. They deserve a lot of respect from us. We must love, honor, obey, and serve our parents for the rest of our lives. It's not going to be easy. It will require effort and patience from us. 
we should be careful not to show our parents that we are annoyed, even as little as saying off to them. We should love them, pray for them, show them respect, be kind to them, listen to them, and don't do things that would make them angry. We should serve them and thank them frequently. We should not address our parents by their names. We should not walk in front of them or sit down before them. We should stand up when they enter a room and kiss them on the forehead frequently. Being good to our parents comes with a lot of benefits and rewards. Allah answers parents' prayers to their children. Being good to our parents earns Allah's pleasure, and angering our parents earns Allah's anger. Being good to our parents is the easiest way to heaven, as heaven lies at the feet of our mother. It is a major sin to disobey and disrespect our parents. Remembering Allah As Muslims, we should constantly remember and praise Allah from the time we get up in the morning until we go to sleep. The Holy Quran and Sunnah remind us in many places how important it is to remember, praise, and glorify Allah, the Almighty, our Creator, with our hearts and tongues. Our faith is linked to remembering Allah and pleasing Him. The more we think of Allah, the higher our faith grows. As humans, the more we love someone, the more we think of them. We should remember Allah often so that our love for Allah will grow. The more we think of Allah, the more He thinks of us. He announces our name in the highest of places. We are in the remembrance of Allah when we are in prayer, reciting the Quran, and doing other forms of worship which is why we do them. Those who remember Allah often will live a beautiful life, and those who don't remember Allah will not live a beautiful life. Greeting Others with Assalamu Alaikum Assalamu Alaikum is a greeting and a prayer meeting. May God's peace be upon you. Just after our God Allah created Adam, peace be upon him, the first human being, Allah told him to walk over to a group of angels and greet them with Assalamu Alaikum. Allah asked Adam to memorize the angel's response, as it will be his greeting and the greeting spoken by Muslims until the Day of Judgment. This greeting was the first phrase that Allah taught Adam, peace be upon him. It is a greeting that came directly from heaven. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said you would not enter paradise until you believe and you will not believe until you love one another. Shall I tell you how you can love one another? Spread salam to each other. Greeting others with assalamu alaikum spreads love. Every time you greet others with assalamu alaikum, you earn rewards from Allah. When someone greets you with assalamu alaikum, you should respond with something better, or at least something like it. The longer the response, the better. So respond with, Alaikum salam wa ramutu Allah, which means, and may Allah's peace and mercy be upon you. If a Muslim meets another and gives salam while shaking hands, their sins fall off like leaves fall off a tree. Whenever you enter a house or any place, you should say the salam greeting, whether there are people there or not. You are spreading salam upon yourself, and there may be angels there that you cannot see in the house. The one who is walking or riding should say salam to those who are sitting. You should say salam when you are leaving, too. Smiling to Others As Muslims, we should try to work on our appearance. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, always had a smile on his face. Not only should you smile at others, but you should try to put a smile on the face of your brothers and sisters and bring them to joy because to our God Allah, that is one of the most loving things you can do. Smiling strengthens brotherhood and is contagious. Honoring Guests Islam teaches Muslims that we must honor our guests and show generosity. If we do, we will be rewarded for that. Our guests should be greeted with salam and with a cheerful smile on our face. We must treat our guests nicely, entertain them, and make them feel comfortable. We should hurry to offer them food and drink, so they won't have to ask for anything. In the end, when we say goodbye, we must do so in a respectful manner. Being grateful and saying thank you. Our God Allah has given us so many blessings and favors that we can't count them all. 
Our Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, taught us not to look at those who have more wealth or status than us, because it can lead us to be ungrateful and not appreciate all the blessings and favors Allah has given us. Instead, we should compare ourselves to those who have less than we have, so that we can recognize all that Allah has given us and become more grateful. Gratitude can strengthen our faith, make us more righteous, and get us closer to Allah. Gratitude is the key to Allah's rewards and pleasure. Being thankful will also cause our blessings and favors to be increased. The more we are grateful, the more Allah will give us. We should feel thankful in our hearts, and we should show it with our tongue when we speak. We should get in the habit of always thanking Allah for all that He has given by saying Alhamdulillah, which means praise and thanks be to Allah. We should also say other words of appreciation to Allah, our parents, and others who help us or deserve our thanks. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, taught us that when we hear good news, whether it's something we gained or some harm that we have avoided, we should fall in sujood to Allah to show our thankfulness and appreciation to Allah. This was something that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, used to do. You don't have to face Qibla or be in wudu to fall in sujood. We should also express gratitude by doing good deeds. An excellent way to show appreciation to Allah is by obeying Him and praying to Him. Another way of showing gratitude to Allah is by practicing patience during difficult times, which is actually a test by Allah to see if we are still grateful during a tough time. Being generous to others. We can also show appreciation by giving some of what we have to others. You can give to others in different ways, by donating money, food, clothes, toys, some of your time, helping an elderly person with their groceries, removing an object from the road, smiling and speaking kindly to others, and so forth. Generosity is giving from your heart. Being generous comes with a lot of benefits and rewards. It increases your faith, gets you closer to Allah, increases your blessings and favors from Allah, and Allah, in return, will remove obstacles and challenges in your life. Wanting good for others A Muslim should want good for his brothers and sisters as much as he wants for himself. This is an essential quality of faith. This requires a Muslim not to get jealous, envious, or have hate for a brother or sister. We should also not bring up their flaws or mistakes in public. Helping Others our God Allah will continue to help you if you keep helping your brothers or sisters. If you help someone in need and make their difficult situation easier, Allah will make it easier for you in this world and the hereafter. Etiquette of Eating, Part 1 If we love Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, we must be eager to follow him and his teachings. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was given the instructions for our complete way of life, including the etiquette of eating and drinking. Following the sunnah of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, comes with a lot of benefits. Before you eat, make sure what you are eating was prepared in a halal, a loud manner, and not a haram. We can only eat halal food, and we cannot eat haram food such as a pig or drink alcohol. If you have guests, offer them food. If you are a guest, be quick to accept food from your host, so you do not hurt their feelings. Wash your hands before you eat to remove germs, bacteria, and any other impurities. Mention Allah's name before you eat by saying, Bismillah, in the name of Allah. It is recommended to say other du'as before eating. If you forget to mention Allah's name in the beginning, you can say, Bismillah awalahu wa akirahu in the name of Allah at the beginning and at the end, as soon as you remember. When you are eating, part two. While you are eating and after, eat and drink with your right hand only and not with your left hand. Hold your utensils with your right hand only. The devil eats with his left hand. Eat and drink sitting down with your knees bent or legs folded. Sit up and do not lean back or lie down while eating or drinking. Eat from what is nearest to you and in front of you, instead of having your hand roam all over the plate. Eat from the edge of the plate instead of the middle of the plate, since blessings flows outward from the center of the plate of food. 
Avoid drinking from a pitcher or jug. Instead, drink only from a cup. Take three sips of your drink. Do not gulp your drink all at once. Avoid breathing into your cup and avoid blowing into your glass. Do not slurp your beverage or soup. Eat slowly and do not rush. Chew thoroughly with your mouth closed. Do not stuff your mouth. Do not talk when eating. Do not say anything bad about the food. Give good compliments when eating something you enjoyed. It is best to share your food with others and eat from a communal dish rather than separate plates. Eat with three fingers unless more fingers are needed, and lick your fingers one by one after finishing your food. If a piece of food accidentally falls to the ground while at home, pick it up and dust the dirt off before eating. Leaving it would feed the devil. Eat in moderation and do not overeat. Fill your belly with one-third food, one-third drink, and one-third air. Many diseases are caused by overeating. Make sure you have finished everything on your plate because you do not know where the blessings are on your plate. Do not waste food. Praise and thank Allah after you finish by saying Alhamdulillah and recite other duas. Wash your hands and gargle your mouth with water. The Sunnah of Sleeping Sleep is a great blessing that our God Allah has given to us to rest and refresh our mind, body, and spirit. Lack of proper sleep can lead to pain, discomfort, and other health issues. There are certain sunnah and etiquette that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, has taught us to sleep religiously and peacefully. One should not sleep before Isha prayer. After Isha prayer, there should be no long discussions, and we are encouraged to sleep right after. Dust your bed using an edge of a garment three times. Clean and brush your teeth with a toothbrush, and use a miswak. Make wudu to sleep in purification. Switch off all lights, shut all doors, and close any containers with food in them. The darker the room, the better to not disturb your sleep. Sleep facing the Qibla if possible. Sleep on the right side of your body, and do not sleep on your left side or your belly. Place your right hand under your right cheek and keep your knees slightly bent. Say your dua before you sleep. O oh Allah! Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with your name I die and I live. Recite the three short surahs, al-Ikhlas, al-Falak, and al-Nas. Then place your hands in cupped position and blow into them. Then wipe over your entire body three times, starting from your head, face, and front of your body. Read Surah al-Mulk as well as the last two verses of Surah Baqarah before going to sleep. Read Ayat al-Kursi to protect you from the devil. Recite Suban Allah and al Madila 33 times and then Allah Akbar 34 times. When you awake, say your morning dua. Praise be to Allah who has brought us back to life after causing us to die, and to Him is the resurrection. Good Personal Hygiene Islam highly encourages and places great importance on the cleanliness of the heart, mind, soul, and body. Our God Allah loves those who are clean and purify themselves. So remaining clean and pure is an act of worship that will get you closer to Allah and something you will be rewarded for. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was the best role model of cleanliness. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, taught us about removing impurity from ourselves. We are told to perform wudu, ablution, before every prayer, and ensure that every part of our body that is supposed to be touched with water is touched with water. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, loved perfume and smelling good for the sake of Allah. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, commanded us to clean ourselves after using the bathroom, clip our fingernails and toenails, wash our hands before and after eating to keep our teeth, gums, and breath healthy and clean by brushing our teeth and using miswak. If you eat garlic raw, do not go to the mosque or gather with people, as it can be offensive. We do all this for the sake of Allah, and so that we are prepared to meet Allah. The End <laughs>